Dude, you, you son of a bitch. That was... Compose yourself, dude. Was, <laughs> if you're experiencing like a really heavy burn, then uh, we need to slow roll this. Rex is investigating something. Whiskey is one of these things that it's just more enjoyable with friends. Whenever you can experience it with other people who are excited about it, they're interested in it. As often is the case, you don't necessarily have whiskey enthusiasts in your immediate circle right out of the gate. So you gotta rectify that. And in this video, we're gonna be using the list that the tribe created yes. of whiskey for beginners. Yeah, the top 10 list, Magnificent Bastards voted on a couple of years ago, the, the best whiskeys for beginners. We're gonna go through those and present them to a real life whiskey beginner. Uh, what kind of whiskey experiences, what kind of whiskey history, what have you tried to date so far? What have you had whiskey wise? I've had Jameson, I've had Bullet, I've had Jack Daniels. So the big giant Jim classic yeah, brands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. What did you, you think? Yeah. I feel like they all kind of just taste the same, to be honest with you. <sighs> oh, Jesus. <sighs> I mean, they all taste the same with Coke, that's, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just uncovered the issue here. Yeah, I think we did. So I'm gonna teach you some basics of whiskey and then we're gonna work our ways through some of these right. okay. to figure out, uh, one, can you tell the difference between these things? Okay. Yeah. And two, what direction do you prefer? I suddenly got, got very concerned about how advanced the YouTube algorithm is. Oh. Because if he can read facial features, then it's going to see a whiskey channel introducing a 17 year old lad to whiskey. Supposedly, he's 24 years old. Supposedly. Rex, would you please bring over the Jameson, since Alex mentioned that was one of the things he's had before. What I want you to be doing with all of these whiskeys on smelling and tasting, right? So this is a really quick primer. When you take a whiskey, no, smell is the majority of taste, right? Right. So when you smell a whiskey, you're gonna take your glass and you wanna bring it in until it, it feels sharp right. to the nose and then back it off just a little. That's the right place for you to smell whiskey. If you open your mouth, and breathe in through your mouth and nose at the same time, you'll help the alcohol vapors oh, wow. bypass your sinus okay. cavity. All right, so while he's nosing this, so while he's, make sure you are answering. Mother <laughs> Dude, you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Next thing, when you take a sip of whiskey, don't just throw it down and, uh, so there's a couple of ways to do this, but the first one I like to do is just take a sip and swallow it. And take about as much as you would drink if it was really hot coffee. If you're experiencing like a really heavy burn, then uh, we need to slow roll this. And Rex is investigating something. I Making sure he's doing it right. Uh, okay. Swallowing correctly? Yeah. <laughs> you Did, know about good. that. Hit the drama, get wicked. Did you get high okay. alcohol burn on that? Or was no, it easy? No, 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 it was really easy. Okay, good, good. So that means uh, that's gonna make everything else much easier. Now when you're smelling these things and tasting them, what you wanna ask yourself is, uh, what does this remind me of? I feel like it's a mix between like smoke and cinnamon is kind of what I'm- Oh, interesting. Kind of what I'm okay. I'm gonna jump straight to another category and we're gonna go straight into monkey shoulder. Should I do a palate cleanser? Yeah, well, let me get you a water. How about this coffee? Is that a palate cleanser? It can be, but we're gonna stick what with- What the f*** is in here? What did you do to this? <laughs> Reset palate in between these. <laughs> So do the same process, we're gonna move a little more quickly, but each time I want you to smell it a little bit, think about what you're getting, then take your first sip and then smell it again. And what you're gonna to wanna to ask hmm. your brain is, how is this different? I guess I'm having, I feel like I don't know, I don't have the knowledge of like the exact like flavors that go into whiskey. No, you won't, no. you won't, that's important. That's important, and here's the thing, whoever you're trying to get into whiskey, they very much need to understand that there's not a wrong way to taste or experience this. No, absolutely. It's, uh, it's basically, the reference points that a person would draw from whenever they're giving tasting notes, if they haven't had those experiences, they don't have any reference points. Right. So it's gonna be very hard for them to verbalize things in the way that you, as a whiskey enthusiast, um, would be able to do just the very first sip in, this even on the nose. This one's leathery. Oh, yeah, interesting. Sure. Right on, right so on. that's a little more of that malt musty note it could be, right? Yeah. It's a little bit heavier, earthy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's your uh, space side malt must. Right. And as you're doing this with your friend, they should feel like you're okay, not yeah. the all-knowing whiskey guru. No, 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 you're right? still They should feel like that you are doing this with them and exploring. I wonder what that could be. It's important to know, Alex, you can't recall patterns you haven't established. Right. So you can't recall whiskey patterns from thin <clears throat> air. What direction did you prefer? I like Jameson more. Okay, good. Jameson more. So let's move straight into 
Uh, let's go a little bit classic bourbon. So I hand that Buffalo Trace that's right there in front of you. The differences with bourbon is immediately two big differences. One is the grain involved. It's gonna be corn uh, and a lot more, and corn dominant with some rye spice and some mm -hmm. malt barley. And then the biggest difference is gonna be it's using a new charred oak barrel. Unlike Scotland and Ireland, where the barrels are going to have already been used before, so the barrel impact is a little bit lower, right. yeah, bourbon is going to have a heavy barrel woody impact, which is going to result in some flavors you might find presenting as dense vanillas, dense cherries, and it'll be much sweeter. It in was. That I was going to say it actually smells quite a bit sweeter than these last two. Yes, absolutely. So I think an important point to make is we aren't drinking along with Alex because dry week, but uh, having that experience the same experience with with your buddy, your family member. One of the more interesting things that happens whenever you're tasting whiskey is you're trying to figure it out, trying to figure it out, trying to put a, a pin in what a specific note is, then somebody else will say something, mm -hmm. and immediately, that's oh, it. yeah. It's like, how could I not have pinned down that I'm tasting cinnamon? Of course it's cinnamon. Uh, now, first, let me ask you, what did you get on that one? I don't want to just say, like, flavor, mm. but... More robust. Definitely darker than the last two. Yeah, so that's your wood impact. More like explosive, I would say. Like yes. more dense? Yeah. More saturation yeah. to the So place. notice that in the first yeah. two, I didn't give him any tasting notes, but in the third one, I actually suggested some flavors. Yeah. yeah. What I was trying to do in that, and I do this regularly, is I try to give someone the reward feeling of recognizing something that's actually there, so they're not going totally blind right. every single time. Yeah, it's it's the difference you know, between trying to uh, create out of the vacuum, mm -hmm. Right, just pulling from the ether of your own experience. You're trying to recognize. Yeah, or versus somebody saying, are you actually experiencing something that is akin to vanilla? Mm. Holy crap, I am. Let's kick into the bullet rye you have on the far right. Yeah. This one, the dominant grain is gonna be rye, and think of it just like rye bread, right? It's gonna be more spicy, more herbal, kind of almost tea direction, potentially. S some people will use when it comes to rye, it's not mm. necessarily this one, this is kind of a lighter rye, but they'll use words like um, black licorice and mm -hmm. anise. On this one, it tends to be more like eucalyptus. Yeah. And, I was gonna say mint. Yeah, eucalyptus and mint was the second thing I was about to say. That's a pretty standard MGP flavor profile, eucalyptus this and mint. This one burns the most, for sure. It's spicy. Like burning. <laughs> Let's move quickly. For the first time, we're gonna introduce you to a little bit of smoke, but we're not gonna do it with an Isla. We're gonna do it with a mildly peated Highland malt. I gotta fix this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Glenfiddich 12. This is a Highland malt, uh, but it does have a little bit of peat smoke in it, which you may interpret either as smoke or your brain may interpret it as black pepper. I wanna hear what Alex has to say in terms of how is this comparing yeah. to any of the other whiskeys so far. This reminds me a little bit more of this one. Ah, one good rough. recognition. Yeah, yeah. That is the closest yeah. thing to it in yeah. this lineup. Yeah, because yeah, right it tastes more, it's that kind of same like leather undertone. Oh, like nice. more, leather more leather undertone. And then the sweeter element, would you say that would be like a fruity sweetness or more of a floral sweetness? Definitely floral for sure. Oh, cool. Yeah. Wow, you're picking up floral on a lightly peated malt. Yeah. Well done, you. Subtlety and yeah. nuance. Yeah. That's your two, your, your two by words. Also minor. Minor. Also a minor, yeah. <laughs> You look like a child. Is what I'm saying. Also a minor, yeah. <laughs> scum! Scum! Destroy the child. You're 12 years old is what I'm saying. You're 12. Some of these are probably older than I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's possible. That one's about as old as me. Oh. The 12. <laughs> yeah. Distilled on your birthday. <laughs> this is going to be one of your smokier malts. It's in the same category as the two you just compared. However, it's a lot more briny, salty. All right, on the nose, how does it compare? You don't have to like these, by the way. I'm not a huge fan of like the, the malt. I mean, yeah, this, this, and the smell of this one. I'm not a huge fan of. Okay, so yeah, what are you smelling? This reminds me of Johnny Walker. Hey, oh no way! Did you know <laughs> that that whiskey is the dominant mix in Johnny Walker, adding the smoke. Oh. The smoke in Johnny Walker is almost always coming from that whiskey. Wow. That's and, impressive. And you're not a fan. I'm of not a huge fan of malty that. scotches. Good to know. Ah. Now that we know, we've narrowed down a lack, a preference he doesn't like. Right. So this was the Macallan. Mm-hmm. You getting that same leathery thing that you're describing as leather and earthy? Not as bad. That one didn't. That one wasn't as bad as these last two. That means the sherry cask is muting some of those malty, okay. musty notes that the bourbon and cask accents. What most sherry casks are bringing to whiskeys are going to be um, kind of like your darker, heavier fruits. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that could be covering up the maltiness that you seem to not like in these other ones. Yeah. yeah. Let's try Elijah Craig next. 
So this is, we're going back into bourbon, and this is gonna be closer to, well, the Buffalo Trace. This one definitely smells sweeter than the last two, which I, I Yeah. Mm. Do you like sweets? Not really. Do you like salt? Yes. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. That one's probably the sweetest that I've had so far, actually. Yes, absolutely. Um, Did you like it the yeah, best? Yeah. Okay, so hold that one here. So it was this is like important. This and Trace. Uh, yes, so you're a Buffalo bourbon Trace. guy. Yeah. So here's what I want to do. There's one remaining bourbon that I want you to try, and if you like it, then you've just found the perfect bourbon to explore with because it's cheap. <laughs> and it's good. It's considered quality. This reminds me a lot of the Elijah Craig. Quite a bit. What do you like better? This is your Elijah Craig. Go back to the Elijah Craig. Yeah, a little AB. Tell me the difference between those two. Okay. Kind of maybe intruding some of the... Oh, like it's, okay. it's a little harder to contrast just because I feel like I'm getting mainly ethanol. Oh, okay. Out of uh, this one. That's an interesting right. point, especially whenever people are getting um, into uh, just neat pours of mm -hmm. spirits. It, it could be the most complex, nuanced thing in the world. If they're not used to a higher proof, that's going struggle. to get overwhelmed by the alcohol note. I always get slightly darker sweet notes in the Elijah Craig than I do in that Four Roses. Yellow label. I mean, I feel like they're they're so similar. Like yes. really, it's just it's just the proof that's screw with that's my catching palate. Off. Yeah, I feel like this one's more like citrus as well, maybe. Oh, interesting. And that was still that's the, gonna be it's a higher rye mash. That's the four roses. Yeah, it's a high. There's more rye on that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah. it does, it could absolutely have a slight more spicy, zesty kind of note to it. I think I like this one. The four roses. Ah, like this one. yeah. That's good for you. Yeah. Because you're going to be able to explore that. Now, next steps, maybe not on this episode, for you. Right. Start trying it with ice. Start okay. trying it adding water and start trying it mixing it into things. Yeah. I do have a little sample of something, Rex, yes. that I snuck in. Oh, do you now? It's not on the list. Yes. However, Is this it's to determine. No, no. It's to determine how redneck your roots are. Oh. Okay, so <laughs> this is a moonshine that Deb made. Okay. Using a Saison beer. Hold on. There's that empty glass on the end. Okay. It smells like grapes. This is what it smells like. Interesting. Now I kind of want to smell that thing. I'm getting, I got like that. skunky herbs. Wow, your hands were really close to my <laughs> face just then. That was... Compose yourself, Daniel. That was, uh, that was a slight caress, yeah. Nice work. Internal monologue for Daniel. It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> I feel like this like... burns less than uh, really? the Daniel Craig, Craig and, uh, yeah. and the Four Roses. Roses. And... All right, just a Daniel Craig. <laughs> he is delicious. <laughs> I mean, I actually like that this. That was your coffee. I like this more than... Wow, he likes Saison distilled more than scotch. Okay, we're gonna go back the other direction and decide whether or not you can stay on with our company or not. It's a skunky man. Did you just call me a pussy? <laughs> so Bring I it think, in at 117 proof. I think let's make it a full ounce and a half pour, like you would get at a bar. If there you, you said, go. Pour me a whiskey neat. Cash strength. What do we got? <laughs> Maybe I am a <laughs> <laughs> Okay, go ahead and start editing. We'll make it more fun. <laughs> yeah.